Nearpod has pre-made social and emotional learning Nearpods ready for you to use in your classroom. On the left-hand menu, you want to click on social and emotional learning. At the top here, you can search for a specific topic or you can look at the different options that they have here. They have bundles, which bundles, um, it tells you the grade level and how many lessons are in them. You would click on it. I wouldn't say add to my library yet. I would click on preview. Then at the top here, it gives you a preview. You can click on this word preview and it gives you a preview of what will be in this bundle of lessons. And if you scroll down, you will see the bundle of lessons here. You can choose to click on add to my library to add the entire bundle, or you can add just specific ones you're interested in. Don't be confused by this right hand side where you see all these lessons. This is not part of the bundle. Those are just other lessons that are related to SEL. So let's go back and look at the other options. If you click on Nearpod, that'll bring you back to the main page. So I'm gonna actually use the back arrow in the upper left hand corner. Let me just scroll this down a little bit so you can see that, this arrow right there. That'll bring me back to my SEL where I was searching before. Then you'll see here that you have check-ins. Check-ins are just warm-ups, little share ideas, um, things for kids to open up about, reach out. So you can see this one has 24 lessons in it. It's K through two. Then as you scroll down, you have the stories. So you'll see this one, SEL and our stories. Those are real stories to encourage discussion about emotions and reflect on SEL skills. The lessons that are on moments are many lessons to equip students with in the moment strategies to practice and apply SEL competencies. So you definitely can check out all of these. Um, let's go ahead and look at this one that is um, about the SEL in digital life. So I'm gonna click on preview and again, at the top here is going to show me a preview of what this is all about so I can read through that. You'll notice this one actually says show in my library, which means I already have this one. So I'm actually gonna go back one page and I'm gonna choose a different option down here that I maybe do not have. So let's choose this one, SEL in action. So I'm gonna preview it. Number preview right here, then I'm gonna scroll down this one said that it had 24 lessons in here, I believe. So if I scroll down, you can see I don't see that many lessons. So at the very bottom, don't forget to click on this little see full bundle content. That will then open up all of the lessons that are in here. You'll notice again, I can add to my library to add all of these lessons, or I can pick and choose which ones I want. So let me just choose this one of um, what are my values. So I'm gonna click on add to my library. Now if I click on show in my library, it's gonna bring me right to this one. But I'm gonna actually click on Nearpod so I can show you how it's right here. I'm on my library and here it is, what are my values. So you'll see as I hover over it, I have the three dots up here where I can share it with other teachers, duplicate it, because maybe I do want to make edits and keep this original. I can add it to a school library or folder. Maybe I'm making um, a version of this for my entire campus, um, and I can even delete it down here. Then you have the options of either live participation, student paste, or you can preview it. And here is your edit if you know for sure you want to edit. But let's first click on preview, just so you can see what this looks like. So again, you'll see the preview button here, and I'm gonna left click on that, and you'll see the arrows on both sides. So I just click through, and I'm previewing what this lesson is about. So if I'm like, you know what, I do kind of like this lesson, there are a few things I wanna take out of it, but overall I like this one, then that's when you can click on the edit option. So I click on edit, and again, if you don't want the original, which you really don't need to make a duplicate of the original because it's going to be in the Nearpod library for you to look back at it anytime. So I'm just going to choose edit lesson. So now you'll see here are all the slides that are in here. And again, these SEL are using the pre-made ones in Nearpod, but Google Slides is also another option for creating from scratch. But we are looking at these ones that are pre-made. So you'll notice on some of the lessons in Nearpod that are pre-made, there are some slides that are teacher related. So if you did need to delete a slide, you could left click on the slide to select it, and then you notice the delete slide is right here. 
Or maybe you just are like, you know what, I'm gonna take this activity out. You would just select those two slides. You can hold the control key. And notice as I hold the control key, I just keep selecting more slides and they highlight in orange or um, unhighlight if you wanna left click on them again. So if I wanted to get rid of both of these slides, I could now just click the delete button. So that's the great thing is you can pick and choose from these pre-made what you want to keep. And now let's say I wanna add something. I actually like adding either a poll or an open-ended question or even a collaborative board at the very beginning of my, my Nearpod, even before we get to the topic here, slide one, because I like kids to have something to do right when they come in while we're waiting for everyone to get in. So let's just click on add slide and I'm gonna choose an activity and I'm gonna choose poll as the activity. So let's just do a fun little question to get our kids talking as they come into the classroom here. We're gonna talk about this little poll and see how we all answer. So how do you make your cereal? Um, add cereal in the bowl first and then pour my milk or pour the milk in the bowl first and then add cereal? Hmm, curious how you all do that. You can add additional answers by clicking on add answer here. So you can have more than just two. I'm gonna stick with just two for this one. Notice here you can add a timer. So if I click on this, I can say I only want my kids to have one minute to answer this. I don't do the add timer with this first one because I want kids to have plenty of time as they're all coming in and getting logged into this Nearpod. You also can add an image to this. Maybe you want to add an image of a cereal bowl. So you can search Google to find one, or you'll notice that you do have the options down here to upload from your computer, your Google Drive, or the other cloud options. So I'm gonna choose the cereal here, and now look at all these cereals. I'm gonna choose this one, because that looks a little healthier. May not be though. Then I just click Save, and now this image will appear for my students as well. You can allow the students to select multiple options, but I'm kind of wanting to get an idea of who does which one of these. Then I can click on Save. Now you'll notice my poll question is in here. So it's all the way down at the bottom. So now I would just left click on it and drag it as I'm scrolling up to my position here. And again, this is just a suggestion, something I like to do. Let's show how you can add a collaborative slide. So I also like to start with this sometimes. Sometimes I'll do an open-ended question if I'm wanting to kind of grade it or see them really individually um, in their reports. Otherwise, if I'm doing it more for just a class discussion to start class, I would choose the collaborative board, choose which background you liked and which post-it notes. You have all these to choose from. And then you can type your question in here. You also can add a picture here as well and you can add additional um, descriptions down here if you need to. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. Remember that collaborative board's gonna show up at the bottom, so we're just gonna come down here to the bottom, left click, and drag it to wherever we want it to be. All right, let's go ahead and put this one after the title slide, but I do sometimes put this before it if I'm not using a poll. Maybe perhaps you don't like their slide, so you wanna actually do your own intro slide to this, so you would again click on Add Slide, this time we're gonna stay under the content category and we're gonna choose just a regular slide. So it gives us theirs. You have the titles kind of over here, the themes that you wanna choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this theme. And then down here at the bottom, you see that you have layout and background options. So backgrounds allow you to use an image. I kind of warn with this because I don't like to put text on top of images. It makes it hard to see. So I always suggest maybe putting your image within here. So you'll notice right here, we can click on the plus sign and we can add either text, video, image, or GIFs, that's your choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose to add an image. I can search Google or I can upload from my um, computer, Google Drive, or one of the other cloud options. You can also left click and just drag a file from your desktop. So there's that, I can add the title up here at the top, whatever I want that to say. If you don't like this layout, there are other layouts right down here. So you can click on layout and you'll see one element would only allow me to either add that image or text. It means you're just adding one thing. So you can see this one here, title and one element is what we chose. Four elements basically divides that slide into four sections where you can add four different things and then the um, title in two elements. So you can choose your different options here. 
You also can add audio. You can either add an audio file you've already created or one that you found somewhere, or you can record right on here just choosing audio recorder. Then this kind of stays, so I'm gonna left click here. You click on the microphone to start recording. Now I can record a message here to my students. You can see over here on the right hand side, it shows me how many seconds my message has been. When I'm ready to stop, I would click the pause button. Then I can either trash it, start again, or I would click save. It'll process depending upon how long of a message you had. It could take a little bit longer or not. And now you'll see here is my message. If we click on the play recording. button, now, now I can record, record a message. It'll play for the students. And at any time you want to preview what your slide looks like, you would just click on preview, and then that shows you what it would look like. To get back to edit, you just click on the X in the upper right hand corner. So that is how you can um, add a slide in there. So I'm going to choose save and exit. That's going to bring me back to my slides again so that I can continue to edit. Keep in mind with the add slide options, you have all this other content that you can add as well. If you have a vocabulary license, you can do that as well. I do believe you do get a couple free vocabulary videos, um, but only so many. So this is better for those that have the actual license for that. So, but I'm not going to get into the detail of all these different options that you have, but that is how you choose between content and activities and can continue to build upon the pre-made slide uh, Nearpods that are already created for you um, and add and edit what they have. Once you are done with everything, you want to click on save and exit in the bottom right hand corner. That'll bring you back to your library and now you are ready to either do a live participation or a student paste. Live participation would be you would be leading the slides as you go through. Student paste is the students can click on the slides through at their own pace and um, you can come into your settings. So if you click on your little person in the upper right hand corner and go to lesson settings, I like to come down here first of all, I always like to make sure you have enable immersive reader on. It allows kids to click on a slide and have it read to them. I also suggest to enable student names to autofill so it automatically puts their Google address in, um, in your reports. Student notes, that's so that students can take notes on each slide. I'm just going to briefly go over these because um, you can get into more depth than those in another video. Show quiz and multiple choice question results in student paste mode. If you don't want them to see those answers, you want to make sure that you have that turned off because otherwise they see a graded version of their quiz in the student paste. So that might be one that you want to have off depending upon what the purpose of your Nearpod is. Maybe it's review and you do want them to see it. Um, allow students to resubmit answers. That again is a personal preference. On this one, I do suggest having enable collaborate board off in the student paste mode because you can't really monitor what's being written on those boards when it's in student paste mode. So I always suggest for that to be off. And what will happen is when students get to a collaborative board, they will just see a message that says they cannot do this in student paste mode and they'll know to just click the next button. You could also, a little tip, when you change a live to a student paste, you could go in and add an open-ended question that was the same as the collaborative board. That way you do get those answers from those students. And this one here, the last one for student paste, is to require student responses and prevent skipping. If you don't have this turned on, wherever you have a poll or an open-ended question or a quiz, if you don't have this turned on, kids can literally go through your Nearpod and just keep clicking the next button and not do any of the activities at all. This makes them have to stop and actually do each activity. So definitely check out the settings. Again, that was underneath your person icon and lesson settings um, to personalize how Nearpod, you want Nearpod to work best for you. So again, this lesson will now be in your library. You can come in at any time and edit it again. If after you use it, you're like, oh, I do want to tweak and make a few changes on it. You can do that as well. And this was just a brief overview to kind of get you started with how you can go in and preview the social emotional learning Nearpods that are already pre-created and then how you can personalize those to best fit your needs. Keep in mind, you can start brand new from scratch by just going to create um, a lesson and start from scratch. If you prefer to design in Google Slides, you can do that in Google Slides as well.
right? Have fun working with Nearpod.